From 1993 to 2003, Rick Mill and Adrian Edmondson wrote and performed five separate live shows based on their TV show Bottom. Whilst Rick and Aid were touring their third Bottom live show, Bottom Live Hooligans Island, they came up with an idea. What if Richie and Eddie were running a hotel? This idea would eventually become a movie and would end up being called Guest House Paradiso. The film itself was released on December 3rd, 1999 and it's a very interesting movie. If you were to look at a poster for this film or a trailer, then you'd assume that it was a film adaptation of the TV series Bottom. I mean, yeah, despite it being called Guesthouse Paradiso and not something like Bottom the movie, it still has Rick Mill and Aid Edmondson in it, and they're still clearly playing their roles of Richie and Eddie. It is a Bottom movie, but with some slight changes. So, what's so confusing about it? The film is called Guesthouse Paradiso. To people who have never seen Bottom, they would look at this and wouldn't be able to tell that it was based on a TV show, and it will confuse those who are familiar with the TV show. What is Guesthouse Paradiso? Is this continuing the show? Is it a standalone Bottom movie? Is it a Bottom movie? Despite the two main characters still being called Rich and Eddie, there was something that was changed about them, and that was their last names. In Bottom, Richie was Richard Richard and Eddie was Edward Elizabeth Hitler. In Guesthouse Paradiso, the characters are now named Richard Twat, which is meant to be pronounced Foyt, and Edward Elizabeth in Dingum Baba. There's no official reason as to why the surnames are different. Maybe it's because the BBC owned the rights and wouldn't let them use the surnames for the film. I don't know. Despite the changes to the names, they're still the same characters as their ones in Bottom. In an interview for The Big Breakfast in 1999, where the two were promoting Guesthouse Paradiso, Rick said this. It's not a bottom movie, it's just that Richie and Eddie are running a hotel. Because of this, most people don't call Guesthouse Paradiso a bottom movie. They see it as something different. I do understand the confusion, but I feel like most people didn't really understand what Rick Mill was saying. I think what he was trying to say was that the film is more of a Richie and Eddie movie than it is a bottom movie. It's a bit of a confusing statement, but it does make sense. The movie doesn't directly continue from bottom at all. Besides Richie and Eddie, no other elements from bottom are used in the film, nor are they referenced. So to call Guesthouse Paradiso more of a Richie and Eddie movie than a bottom movie does actually make a bit of sense. Guesthouse Paradiso also doesn't seem to be that well known among general film fans. I only knew about this movie because I'm a fan of Bottom and I found out about it much later and when I did I looked at the poster and being a fan of Bottom I thought it was a Bottom movie, just not really a direct one. This film was also made on a budget of £3 million and it sadly didn't get its money back so I think that Guesthouse Paradiso not being advertised as a Bottom movie really didn't help this film financially. Plus Guesthouse Paradiso was released after films like Toy Story 2 and The World Is Not Enough, the 19th James Bond movie had just been released and that might have affected the film's box office earnings due to those films probably being more highly anticipated at the time. In terms of the film's advertising, it is important to note that when Guesthouse Paradiso was eventually released on VHS and DVD, it was released with the tagline of Richie and Eddie's Bottom movie and I do think that this was a better way of selling the film as it makes the person looking at the film more aware of what it is. So despite these changes from Bottom, do I consider Guesthouse Paradiso to be a Bottom movie? I do indeed, but as a Bottom movie, it sadly isn't perfect. The movie sees Richie and Eddie now running the Guesthouse Paradiso, a poorly run hotel which is pretty much the worst hotel in the whole UK. During the start of the film, we get to see a variety of people stay at the hotel, but the most important side character to the plot is Gina Carbonara, played by Helen Mahew. Gina Carbonara is an attractive Italian film star who recently failed to turn up to her own wedding. Her fiancé is the violent Italian playboy Gino Bolognese. Gina finds the Guesthouse Paradiso and uses it as a way to hide from the paparazzi and from Gina. During the film's climax, Gino manages to track down Gina and so Rich and Eddie must help Gina get away from Gino, as well as find a way to get out of the hotel due to the large amounts of vomiting caused by an accidental serving of poisonous fish coming from Gino and the rest of the people in the hotel. Fun fact, Gino's actor, Vincent Cassell, is best known for voicing Robin Hood in the first Shrek movie. I never knew that. Speaking of Shrek, the fairy godmother in Shrek 2 is voiced by Aid Edmondson's wife, Jennifer Saunders. I do hope that there are more connections between Bottom and Shrek. Anyway, in terms of the other guests that stay at the hotel during the film, we get a brief cameo from Bill Nye and Kate Ashfield as Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, a recently married couple who quickly leave after the pool service during breakfast time. We also get a family who are there for a nice little holiday simply because it was the UK's cheapest hotel, but soon get concerned due to the behaviour of Rich and Eddie, with the dad being played by Simon Pegg in his first film role. 
Of course, in 2004, Simon Pegg, Kate Ashfield and Bill Nighy would go on to star in Edgar Wright's horror comedy, Shaun of the Dead. Fenella Fielding plays Mrs. Foxfur, a drunk old lady who's clearly been staying at the hotel for years, as well as these newlywed couple characters played by Kate Lustow and James Darcy, who just stay in their room and have sex. You may have noticed that I said that Gina Carbonara is the most important side character in the film, and well, that's because she is. She's the only side character that's properly established and has a reason to be in the hotel. Simon Pegg's family in this are just here for a cheap holiday. Fenella Fielding basically just lives in the hotel and that newlywed couple just stay in their bedroom all day to have sex. Whereas Gina is here to escape from her violent fiancé. If you were to cut out any of the side characters that don't add anything to the film's plot, then nothing will be lost. The only reason why all the side characters are in the film is just for the whole vomiting climax, so that they can eat the poisonous fish and throw up all over the hotel, and then defeat Gina by using their puke to push him out of one of the hotel windows. Because obviously why wouldn't that happen? This is the corridor, and this is the light switch. I've depressed the light switch now, which is on a timer, which has been scientifically designed to allow you plenty of time to take your key and insert it in the arse. Insert it in your arse? As you can tell, besides Richie and Eddie, no other elements from Bottom are used in the film. Characters from Bottom such as Dave Hedgehog, Spudgun and Dickhead don't make an appearance in this film. Not even John makes an appearance. What a fucking shame that is. <laughs> It would have been fun to see the other bottom characters have something to do in the movie. Seeing Spudgun and Hedgehog as Richie and Eddie's hotel employees most likely would have led to a lot of really great moments of dialogue between the characters as well as some really good physical comedy. And seeing Dickhead as a hotel's barman would have also been really funny. What's weird is that Stephen O'Donnell, who played Spudgun and Bottom, plays a completely different character in this movie. He plays the Romanian chef who quits his job at the start of the movie because of the treatment that he was getting from Richie. Why was he playing a Romanian and not Spudgun as a chef? I have no idea. Seeing Spudgun as a chef would have been really hilarious, but oh well. The bottom live shows were just for characters of Rich and Eddie, but that worked due to those being live shows, so you can get away with having a smaller cast. Plus, the plots of those live shows never needed other characters. Rich and Eddie were enough. Anything else would feel distracting. Guest House Paradiso is something that needs multiple characters since it's set in a hotel. It just doesn't make sense as to why none of the other bottom characters are a part of the plot. It's a bit like making a Simpsons movie. You set it in a location with a ton of comedic potential, but the only characters you have from the show are Bart and Maggie. The reason why I find the whole side character problem to be distracting is because 90% of them barely affect the plot. Guest House Paradiso is a film based on Bottom, and whenever Bottom had an episode full of various side characters, they would always affect and further the plot of the episode. Let's go through an example, Apocalypse. Richie and Eddie hear the news that Richie's auntie Olga has passed away, and in typical Bottom fashion, they want to be the first ones to get all of her leftover money that she put into her will. As soon as they receive the money, they head down to the local funfair to spend half of it. Before Richie is able to pay, he notices that he has lost his wallet, which has half of the cash, which the person running the funfair stall doesn't believe. Eddie tries to distract the man, but ends up accidentally shooting him in the eye. Therefore, this causes Richie and Eddie to try and escape due to their lack of money. This causes the man running the funfair first door to get his gang of friends to chase after Rich and Eddie for not paying, and for Eddie shooting him in the eye. This leads Rich and Eddie to hide in a tent with a fake fortune teller who tricks Richie into thinking that he will soon be dead within the next few days, with various incidents happening making Richie believe that the fake fortune teller had actually cursed him. Oh, it's so good to be alive! After you, old timer! <laughs> Could it be me? <laughs> it's about girls. I was. Shut up, Eddie! I was wondering if I could just have a few more. It's... Will you shut up, Eddie? Well, just one once. I mean, it was. Right, that's it. <laughs> Edward Hitler, come down here at once! <laughs> 
each side character has furthered the plot of the episode, with the most important side character in the episode being the fortune teller, who has caused Richie to become incredibly worried about his possible death during the episode's second half. Eddie then disguises himself as the Grim Reaper, which makes Richie even more sure of his possible death. Eddie disguises himself as the Grim Reaper in order to con Richie into giving him the rest of Auntie Olga's cash, as well as some of Richie's other personal favourite items. Eddie runs off and falls down the stairs, causing Richie to find out that it was Eddie in disguise, and the man who was running the funfair stall earlier in the episode manages to track down the two after finding Richie's wallet. Richie had earlier mentioned the rest of the money that they had left on the top of the bathroom cabinets, and so the man from the funfair manages to steal the money off of Eddie, who had just conned it off of Richie. The episode then ends with Richie giving him the permission to kick Eddie in the balls. Each element in this episode just furthers the plot of the episode, and each character has a purpose. It also means that a lot of great jokes and slapstick comedy can happen. Even characters such as the nurse, who don't add much to the plot itself, do add to Richie's over-the-top worrying. A majority of the side characters in Guesthouse Paradiso don't add a lot to the plot. They're just there to eat the fish so that they can puke everywhere and puke on Gino. They have an effect on the climax, not on the overall plot. The only thing most of them add to is the comedy. Simon Pegg and his family arrive, causing Richie to look through their belongings. He then sees some red rubber underwear and a rubber bra and decides to put them on. He then hears the family coming back upstairs, so he has to try and hide. Gina Carbonara arrives, causing him to rush to Eddie to tell him the news, but he can't find him. This causes him to hide in the kitchen oven as a last result. The oven gets turned on by accident by Gina and Richie gets overheated, which makes his face go all red and causes Eddie to blow up the rubber underwear, which causes Eddie to poke the underwear with a kebab skewer, causing it to explode and Eddie to fly out of the hotel. The characters have an effect on the comedy surrounding Rich and Eddie, but there's not a lot of comedy that affects the side characters themselves. The only thing that Rich and Eddie do that affects the comedy surrounding the side characters is when Eddie uses a fishing hook to try and take back a security VHS tape that Simon Pegg had just taken, but instead of attaching the hook onto the VHS tape, he attaches it onto Simon Pegg's nipple, which does lead to one of the film's finest lines. Oh yes, Lady Diana, Princess of Wales. Smack me up, you bitch. I don't have much to say about the other side characters because they hardly do anything. Can I ask where your eggs come from? Hen's vaginas. Ah. Oh. All Bill Nye and Kate Ashfield's characters do is set up the opening fight scene. Vanilla Fielding just does whatever and that newlywed couple have no reason to be in this film. Even the characters forget about them. Who are you? Uh, we're Mr. And Mrs. Barker. Barker. <laughs> the honeymoon couple. You're still here. Have you been in bed all day? Well, we're nearly words. Good grief. The side characters in Guest House Parody, so whilst all right, just end up being forgettable. And that's weird to say since Bottom had a lot of great side characters. The Gas Man, Dickhead, Spud Gun and Hedgehog, Mr. Rottweiler, among others. I remember the personalities of these characters and what they did. I remember how they interacted with Rich and Eddie. I don't remember much about the side characters in Guest House Paradiso, other than the fact that they are in the movie and they do things which happen, and that one of them is played by Simon Pegg. Anyways, I've talked enough about the side characters. Are Rich and Eddie still funny? Rick Mill and Aid Edmonton are once again playing Rich and Eddie. Richie is the hotel's manager and Eddie is basically Richie's servant and the hotel's bellboy, doing whatever is needed. Besides the slight changes with their names, there are some other minor differences. Richie and Eddie both don't feel as energetic as their characters in Bottom, which is a shame, but it does make sense since this was made so soon after Rick Mill's quad bike accident and so all that high energy wouldn't have been easy for him to do. Richie also comes across as a lot more fed up and sarcastic when compared to his character in Bottom. Who is more crazy? <laughs> and I honestly don't mind this change, and I think this change makes sense. If a crazy person like Richie were to be running a hotel, then they probably would be acting this way. Eddie doesn't do much in this film, unfortunately, but he still has some funny moments. His character is still an alcoholic, but he doesn't feel as over the top when compared to his character in Bottom. It's also interesting that Adrian Edmondson was the one who directed this film, and he actually does a decent job. This has been the only film that Adrian Edmondson has directed, with most of his directing credits being for TV. Although it isn't perfectly made, the lighting at times can be a bit off, 
but I'm not sure if this was meant to be intentional since this is meant to be a crappy hotel. The film visually is a lot different to bottom as well and the visual style does work well for the film. But yeah, Rich and Eddie are still funny. There's not as many memorable comedic moments when compared to bottom but there's still some good moments of comedy from each character. Since this is a bottom movie, we do get a fight between Rich and Eddie which happens 20 minutes into the film. Although the film only has one big fight scene between the two, after Rich and Eddie try to serve breakfast due to the lack of a chef, the two get into an argument this causes them to have a giant fight in the kitchen and whilst it's a funny fight I do think that the more cinematic feel of the bottom fight scene is a bit distracting and it also affects the pacing of the fight a bit. The fight scenes in the TV show worked more in my opinion due to the simplicity and because of the execution of the violence. I feel like the sound effects in the guest house parody so fight scene feel more like your common movie sound effects and that's not what you want. The sound effects in the bottom fight scenes are an integral aspect of the fight scenes. They help make the violence feel a lot more impactful. If you were to change the sound effects or not have any sound effects, then the violence wouldn't be as funny. <laughs> Guest House Paradiso's fight scene is definitely not bad. It's still funny and there are some good moments of over the top violence, but because it has to be more cinematic, it just isn't as memorable as the fight scenes in Bottom. And after watching the scene, I actually realised something. I think Freak Mail has a fridge fetish. <laughs> <laughs> One eternity later. My head! The mega bitch squashed my head! The bitch! She squashed my head! The evil one reigns supreme! As mentioned earlier, this film was made very soon after Rick Miles' quad bike accident and the original script for the film had over three hours worth of movie in it. So obviously the film had to be trimmed down and bits had to be rewritten. And since Rick Mel would have been in hospital during all this, it meant that Aid Edmondson had to do a good amount of the rewriting. And when you watch the film, it is pretty clear that it feels rewritten. I feel like if Rick was able to be more involved in the rewriting, then the film would have been as strong as bottom. It definitely feels like a bit of a messy script. Again, most of the side characters aren't great, Plus, the film is very abrupt with its ending. Everyone pukes on Juno, he then falls out of the window. Richie, Eddie and Juno then quickly make their way downstairs and they are suddenly given money by the government to help them flee the country and flee to the Caribbean. All this is done in two minutes and it's all very rushed. And the film itself is only 85 minutes long. I think a longer and less abrupt ending would have been fine. During the end credits, we see Richie, Eddie and Juno now running the beach bar Paradiso. I think this was meant to be set up for a sequel that was never made. Oh well. One of the notable differences between Guest House Paradiso and Bottom would have to be their tones. Whilst Bottom was a show that was aimed for adults, it was incredibly childish. It managed to find that right balance, making it feel like a perverted live action cartoon. Guest House Paradiso is once again made for a more adult audience, but it doesn't feel as lighthearted as Bottom. One of the reasons why Bottom works so well was due to his over the top tone and the fact that Rick and Aid were clearly self aware about it. Honestly at first I wasn't that much of a fan of the darker tone since it does feel a bit out of place on a first viewing but the darker tone has grown on me and so has the film itself. In terms of the darker tone one of the things that stands out is the character of Gino especially near the end of the movie where he tries to take advantage of Gino. These moments may be attempts at dark comedy but it doesn't really work since Gino isn't that well written of a character. Of course in bottom Richie would try and pair them women and these moments worked comedically due to Richie being well established at the start of the show as a loser so we know that he won't really do anything anything bad is going to happen to him. So that makes it funny. Gina was established at the start of Guest House Paradiso as sort of a violent abuser, so these moments of him taking advantage of Gina feel slightly out of place in a bottom movie. So Guest House Paradiso, does it work as a bottom movie? In terms of the stuff to do with Richie and Eddie, I think those parts work well. They're funny and Rick and Aid are obviously great. They're honestly the only reasons to watch this film. The slapstick is also good but not as funny as the slapstick in bottom, even though the slapstick in Guest House Paradiso is well executed. I just think that in terms of the film's story, script 
and the side characters, there's a lot that could have been improved. If I were to watch this film without any prior knowledge to what Bottom is or who Rick Mel and Adrian Edmondson were, I could see myself enjoying aspects of it, particularly their performances, but I don't know if Guest House Paradiso would make me want to see Bottom. Guest House Paradiso definitely works more if you've actually seen Bottom itself. I do get what Rick and Aid were trying to do by making this a standalone Rich and Eddie movie rather than a direct follow up to Bottom as a whole series. And whilst I do like the film, I don't think their goal was that successful. I think if they did something similar to the Mr. Bean movies or the Naked Gun movies, where those work both as standalone movies and as follow up films to the TV shows that these films were based on, then that might have made the film better. It would have satisfied fans with Bottom instead of confusing them, and it would have been a fun way to introduce people who weren't familiar with Bottom to the characters. In the first Mr. Bean movie, there are a few scenes where they repeat or recreate jokes from the TV series, but they managed to use the jokes so that it fits with the plot. For example, in the first Mr. Bean film from 1997, simply titled Bean, Mr. Bean has to go from London to America, so of course he'll go by plane. This gives the writers the chance to recreate the plane scene from the episode Mr. Bean Rides Again. The joke isn't repeated due to laziness, it's repeated because it fits with the plot of the movie. Fans of Mr. Bean will enjoy seeing a recreation of this scene in film form, and newcomers will enjoy this scene simply because it's funny. I feel like if Rick and Aid took this approach with Guest House Paradiso, where they recreated some gags from bottom and fitted them into the plot, then I think that would have helped. For example, in the episode Holy. Richie and Eddie have to make Christmas dinner and whilst preparing the food, Richie accidentally cuts his finger off with a meat cleaver, causing it to bleed heavily. I think they could have done something similar in this movie, perhaps they could have made it more extreme. Richie and Eddie have to make food for the hotel guests and so Richie gets a meat cleaver to cut the meat and instead of him cutting off one of his fingers, he cuts off his whole hand. And since Richie is a huge perv, he could accidentally cut off his right hand, meaning that throughout the film, whenever he tries to have a quick sneaky wank, he's unable to, which causes him to go more insane and would have led to some really funny moments. Bottom is my favourite TV show of all time, and it is slightly disappointing that the film isn't as funny or as memorable as the TV show. I just think that this is one of those films that has suffered due to its advertising and its confusing connection to the TV show it's based off of. To me, this is a bottom movie. If it's not a bottom movie, then well, what is it? If you've seen bottom, then I think that checking out Guest House Paradiso might be worth at least one watch. If you haven't seen Guest House Paradiso, then watch Bottom first. I will also say that when I first watched this film, I found it to be pretty average, but I've surprisingly liked it more on rewatches. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Uh, where, where's the sea view? Oh, yes. Uh, that'll be out of the window. Yeah, well, I, I can't see it. That's what I mean. You have to lean out of the window. Come along, come along. Lean out of the window. Lean out of the window. Lean out of the window. <laughs>